Sweet potato is amongst the most important food crops in Uganda alongside banana and cassava. In Africa, Uganda is the largest producer of sweet potatoes and the third in the world after China and India. In breeding, we develop new varieties. Before we develop new varieties, we consider the constraints because our work is farmer-centered. So we consult the farmers to extract the traits that are most needed in a good sweet potato variety. The major constraints we look at are yield, taste, resistance to disease, and resistance to pests. The most important disease focused on right now are the sweet potato virus complex, alternaria blight, and the sweet potato weevil. We also address the drought tolerance with the current unreliable seasons due to climate change. We look into nutrition where we consider the bitter keratin content and the high dry matter content because our consumers like varieties that have 30% and above dry matter. We look at varieties that have the traits of our interest and we put them in what we call a crossing block or simply call it a, a maternate wort. When these varieties flower, we cross, we take pollen from one variety and put it on the stigma of another variety and we tag those particular crosses from which we collect the seed. And some of the seed we collect, the bees are the ones that would have done that work for us and those seeds we call open pollinated. Then when we get those true seeds, we plant them in a seedling nursery and then we select basing on individual plant basis and bearing in mind the traits of interest that I've mentioned before. Thereafter we go through the different clonal stages and we still emphasize our traits of interest and we also go to different locations where sweet potato is important. For example, in Uganda here, sweet potato is very important in the Soga region, it's very important in the Central region, and it's very important in the uh, Teso region. So, those are the areas where we go and work and make sure the consumers appreciate those varieties. Having worked on the stations, narrow stations, we then move to the farmers' fields and evaluate these clones together with the farmers so that the farmers are satisfied with what we are going to put out. And it's the farmers who put a final yes on a variety before we release it. And once we get that variety, which is uh, due for release, we go through what we call a variety release committee. We present our findings, the likes, the weaknesses of the varieties, the strong points, and the variety release committee considers the varieties for release. To date, we have released 27 varieties. The major challenge right now is the sweet potato weevil. Naro has not yet developed any variety with high resistance to the sweet potato weevil, so conventional methods of early harvest have been used to control it. Early harvest is recommended to avoid the dry season, which is the time when the weevil attacks. But the setback is that when the farmers all harvest at once, they tend to get very low prices for their sweet potatoes. Another major challenge is the seed system for the sweet potato. Sweet potato is vegetatively propagated, so it has a high chance of virus accumulation in its seed. These viruses are passed on through generations and with time, the variety ceases to be productive. And farmers think, tend to think that narrow produces varieties that yield for some time and then they stop. Yet, they don't do selection of their seed. The sweet potato weevil affects sweet potatoes, coffee, maize and cowpeas all across Africa from the north to the south. Adult weevils feed on leaves, tubers and vines. They prefer to feed on the tubers, but at the beginning of the growing season, when the tuber has not yet developed, they will feed on the stems and leaves. They lay eggs in the vines and leaves, and the grubs feed on the stems and the leaves as well. The weevils do not dig, so they access the tubers through exposed parts above the soil, through cracks in the soil. They lay their eggs in small puncture holes in the tuber and the grubs grow and tunnel through it as they eat. 
If an affected tuber is stored with clean seed or even next to one which is growing, it can destroy the whole harvest. Symptoms of weevil infestation manifest in the leaves as bite holes, in the roots as internal and external bite holes and burrowing, and in the stems as a yellow discoloration and as bite holes. Another challenge is the market perception. Out of ignorance, people tend to shy away from the orange-colored sweet potato because of the common belief that it has been genetically altered. All the varieties we have right now on the market are conventionally bred. Just like the, we just imitate what the bee does to produce these varieties. The, the breeding happens in nature, as they say, the bees also pollinate the varieties and we get new varieties. So we just go to out there in the nursery, in the breeding nursery, and imitate the bees. Uh, and then we get the seed and uh, start growing it and get new varieties. Right now, we don't have any genetically modified sweet potato on the market. There are over 20 varieties released so far, both white and orange fleshed, as a government-led intervention, which was prioritized by NARU. In 2002, 20% of Uganda's preschool children and 19% of lactating and pregnant mothers were vitamin A deficient. Vitamin A deficiency, one of the most pernicious forms of micronutrition deficiency, can lead to blindness, stunted growth, early death, and others. This prompted NARO in partnership with other stakeholders and partners to take action. As little as 125 grams of orange flesh sweet potato, or OFSP as it's commonly known, a day contain enough beta carotin to provide children under five with a daily recommended dose of vitamin A. Now my special privilege to announce that the 2016 World Food Prize laureates are Maria Andrade of Cafeo, Robert Mwanga of Uganda, Jan Lowe of the United States, and Howarth Buis, the founder of Harvest Plus. Dr. Robert Mwanga, the 2016 World Food Prize winner, who received an award because of the Orange Flesh Sweet Potato Initiative, indicated that nine Orange Flesh Sweet Potato varieties, including two land races, have been released to curve the vitamin A deficiency challenge. These varieties have most of the desirable traits, namely rich in vitamin A, early maturing, high dry matter content, high resistance to common and devastating sweet potato diseases like alternaria blight and sweet potato virus with a high beta carotene concentration. The varieties released have been released in a systematic way in 2005, 2007 and most recently in 2013. NARO, in collaboration with several partners, have been at the center stage of this initiative with active roles in variety development, dissemination of planting materials and information packages, promotion, as well as mobilizing for resources which have enabled achievement of these milestones. Dissemination and promotion of these varieties have been ongoing since the inception of this initiative. And also the challenge with the orange flesh, which is very good for children and uh, pregnant mothers, uh, some people tend to shy away from it because they think it is genetically modified. And yet we breed it the same way as we breed the other sweet potatoes. By 2009, 65% of Uganda's households were growing one or more of these varieties. The technology was adopted in a space of two years and there is a record of increasing adoption of the technology. Given its potential to significantly contribute to a viable, long-term and effective and suitable food-based approach to vitamin A deficiency, other countries have also embraced the technology, including but not limited to Kenya, Rwanda, Tanzania, Malawi, Ethiopia, Sudan, just to mention a few. The orange-fleshed sweet potato has yields above 10 tons per hectare. They require less labor, fewer inputs, hence being suitable for households threatened by natural calamities. 
Critical factors which have made this exercise a success include the political support, given the fact that the challenge was a national concern, strong and well-established partnerships, availability of resources including financial, human and infrastructural facilities, to mention a few. Both the root and the leaves are consumed. Sweet potato has a short maturity period, unlike banana and cassava, so it is used for food security during times when cassava and bananas are not yet mature. Sweet potato is good for fodder for livestock and it is used in the starch industry and all these uses are being further explored. In Serere, farmers are taken to farmer field schools to give them knowledge about growing clean sweet potato seeds, how to produce sweet potatoes, how to ensure high yielding varieties, the maturity times, and the general agronomy of the crop. Christina Kello is one such beneficiary. She grows four varieties of sweet potato in her farm, and amongst them, Naspot 12 and Naspot 13. It was introduced to us by SIP, that is the Center International Potato, then again by Harvest Plus. At first we were growing the local varieties, but when these organizations came, they introduced the orange flesh sweet potato, telling us it has the vitamin A, which is very necessary for ourselves, for the both children and adults. So we really became very, very interested on the sweet potato. The farmer training involves a lot of hands-on, labor-intensive practical study. Then again, from those varieties, we had to select it. Which one is, the, I may say, sweet, uh, with a lot of flour? Uh, how, do you, how do you know it has a lot of flour? You have to eat it. Then you find that either it's watery or starchy. So all those processes, we went through them. So by that time, we really came up with Kakamega and a Jumula and a Kabode as one of the best sweet potatoes. The biggest focus of the generation of new varieties was to produce the orange flesh sweet potato. Farmers found the training very helpful. The new varieties from Naro have benefits such as high vitamin A content, they're not common, so they have a high market value, and they are high yielding. First of all, I think I should thank the government of Uganda for allowing the, the, the organizations, the donors, to come to farmers because we have really benefited a lot from this orange flesh sweet potato. Mm, because of the vitamin A, we taught a lot about the sweet potato. So we also can now pass that message to other farmers, to hospitals, uh, so that it, the sweet potato is so much liked by people. So that's to say it has earned us a lot. Christine discusses the direct benefits to the farmers from learning the agronomy of the crop and planting and harvesting sweet potatoes. Then uh, they taught us how to conserve it. That's to say, on the, on, on the onset of the rains, we have the planting material. So that's when we really touch good money, when others also come to buy the, the material from us. So it has really uplifted most of the farmers around, not even my group members alone, but the adopters as well. When asked about the overall profitability of farming sweet potatoes, Christine had this to say. We are hoping to have outside markets. Then I think it will increase more. The, the benefits will increase. I really thank narrow because it has helped us always to to have clean seed which is very very important for a farmer you must have a clean seed in order to get a good yield what would success be if we didn't take time to share advice 
and give thanks. Uh, my advice to the farmers is that we should not get uh, the, the, the we should not stick on local varieties. They are good. They don't lose uh, like this one when it, it takes uh, some years. It, the, the whatever comes down. But for the locals, you can continue. But we have a lot of uh, pests and diseases these days. So we need to use clean varieties so that we get the high yields. Otherwise, if we don't use clean varieties, we are not, get, we are not, going, we are not going to be able to, to get the high yields. Then secondly, mm, farmers should be in groups so that uh, other organizations would be able to reach them to give them some agronomic practices. Thank you for joining us for another episode where this time we learned all about sweet potatoes, the orange fleshed sweet potatoes, its diseases and pests, and also heard success stories from our farmers. Join us next week as we take a look into cassava. Reach us on our social media platforms through Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube at Naro Uganda.